Hey what's up YouTubers, it's Dansky and in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at importing and working with images in Adobe InDesign. So to start with we've got our new document here and we're going to go up to file, down to place and then navigate to our image and simply select this and click open. And you should get something that looks like this and you can left click and drag and it will place your image within this frame or you can simply left click and it will place your image in at full size. Now you can see here that this is quite a high res image. I'm using an A4 sheet of paper as my document size and this image is rather large and we want to scale it down. So there's a few ways you can do that. You can zoom out using command minus or control minus if you're on the PC and then command or control plus to zoom back in. So let's just zoom out. Now you'll notice that if we drag the frame like so it doesn't actually resize the image it just crops into it so this is quite different from some of the other Adobe programs so there's a few ways in which you can scale this down you can use the scale tool over here now we want to scale this to the center currently it's the top left point up here you'll see here the reference point so if we scale it it will scale it towards that corner. We want to select the central point. So when we scale it now, holding shift to keep it proportional, it will scale towards the center, like that. Another way we can do this is up here, you have these boxes. So scale X percentage and scale Y percentage. Now this little anchor sign will constrain the proportions when you're scaling. So if I select in this box here, I can select a percentage here, or I can type a percentage, or what I can do is use the arrow keys. So if I tap the arrow key up, it scales it up very slightly. And I can keep tapping up, or I can go down to scale it down. Or I could hold shift and tap up, and it will scale it up in larger increments. The same again, I can hold shift and tap the down arrow key, and it will reduce the size again in larger increments. If I untick, this little link icon, you'll see that when I do the same to increase the height, it does skew the image. So usually this isn't something that you necessarily want. So it's always a good idea to leave this ticked unless you really need to, to skew the image out of proportion. So another thing we can do is we can just drag our frame and then just position it so that it fits array for page and we can use the uh, move tool here which will drag the image around with the crop that we've given it or we can use the content placer tool that's this one here and we can move the image around as we like so this is great for adjusting the crop but it will keep the frame in the same position so if we switch back to the main arrow tool you'll see that our frame is in exactly the same position still cropped to the edge of the document but it's this tool here this selection tool I think it's like a ah there we go sorry direct selection tool so the same as in Adobe Illustrator the direct selection tool will allow you to select the element or the image in the frame and move it around without actually adjusting the position of the frame itself. So similarly, as we increase the size of the image and the frame or decreased it, we can use the direct selection tool to select the image. You'll see this hand appear. But because we're using the direct selection tool, if we now click up here in this same box and then hold shift and use the up and down arrow keys, we are scaling the image itself within the frame. So that again, the frame still stays in the same position, but we're only moving the image. So this is great for adjusting the crop. A few other things that you can do is you can right click on the image. You can go to fitting and then you've got a whole bunch of different options here. So you can center your content within the frame 
or you can get it to fill the frame proportionally. There's a whole different range of options that you can use. And if you are wondering why the picture is a little bit fuzzy, that's typically because when working in InDesign, you can go up to View, Display Performance, and down to Fast. And you'll see here that this is if you have a very, very busy document. So for example, if you were working on a magazine that had 100 pages, lots of images and text, and was a very large document to process, sometimes you might switch into this view just because it allows you to move through the document and edit things a lot quicker as it InDesign doesn't have to display every single image in high resolution. Typical display is kind of sort of middle of the road, you know, it's, it's pretty good, but if you zoom in on the images they will be a bit pixelated. If you want to see everything in, in high res, just go up to view, display performance and select high quality. So you'll see now, you should have seen it change then, that now this image, if I zoom in, it's rendering it in all its glory and it looks amazing. But if you do have lots of different pages with lots of high res imagery, it may slow down your computer. It's going to be a lot for your computer to process as you're moving around such a large document with such high quality imagery. And the last thing I just want to talk about quickly is when you work with imagery in Adobe InDesign, you're not actually adding the image into a document. So this is just, this image links to a location on my computer. So it's just pulling through that image. So if I went out of InDesign and edited that JPEG in Photoshop, for example, and I changed all the colors, did a whole load of edits, and then saved that JPEG, it would flag when I opened the doc document in InDesign that this image that is linked into the document has changed, it's been modified, and you've got the links palette up here. So what would happen is you would see here, you'd see a little yellow hazard sign and it would say that the image that InDesign is linking to has changed and you'd need to update it. And what you can do is you can do that down here. Or if you move or rename the image outside of InDesign, then it's, it's not going to be able to find the file. It will flag up with a red circle and exclamation point inside saying, I can't find the file, and then you'll have to go and locate it. And you'll have to relink it using this option here. So it's similar to some other programs. If you have any kind of linked imagery, then you will need to make sure that you have it bundled together with your InDesign document, because if you do move that image or you edit it in any way, it will affect what you have within InDesign in that document. And actually, there is one more thing I'm just going to quickly talk about before I wrap up this video. And that's if you go to the tool, and let's say we're going to draw a, ooh, a hexagon. So we'll draw a hexagon. We will fill it with a color in our swatches palette. So let's just pick blue. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add that photo inside this shape. It's very simple. What you do is go up to File, down to Place. Again, we've got our cabin image. We'll select that and we'll just select replace selected item. Click open and you'll see here again that it's added that image within the hexagon itself and we can use our direct selection tool to position it. And this box up here plus shift and the down arrow key just to scale it and then move that in position. Remember when you're using the direct selection tool, you will see this hand icon. So that's a handy way to know that you're moving the image rather than the frame. So if I switch back to the normal selection tool, you'll see here that our frame is around the hexagon only. And there we go. That's a little introduction to importing and working with images in Adobe InDesign. As always guys, leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time. Thank you.